Good morning and welcome to the Covert Knits Podcast. My name is Abigail Covert. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is my podcast where I chat all about knitting and yarn and anything fiber related. So if you're a new viewer, thank you so much for stopping by and checking it out. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you for coming back. Today is Saturday, August 14th, and I'm coming to you from Omaha, Nebraska. I have lots to chat about today. I have four finished objects, including three finished adult size sweaters. Yes, three. Don't worry, they just had a few things left to do on them to be finished for today's podcast. And then one other finished object. I have two works in progress to share with you. And then I have a little bit, or you know, maybe a little bit more than a little bit, stash enhancement. So we're gonna go ahead and jump right in. I wanna try and get this done as quickly as possible because uh, I've got lots to do on this beautiful Saturday morning. So let's just start with uh, the two most obvious ones, what I'm wearing and my uh, good friend here. So what I'm wearing, this is my first finished object. This is my Rift Tee um, by Jacqueline Seaslack. This is the first, or I'm sorry, this is the second uh, version of this that I have knit, both out of the same yarn, which is the Knit Picks Cotlin, uh, in, which is a DK uh, cotton and linen blend. And this colorway is Cyan. And it's a, a little bit cropped. I made mine a little bit longer than the pattern called for. Uh, short sleeve T. Let me stand up so you can see it. So there's the front. It's got, so it's not too, sorry, I'm very short. It's got a split hem. It's worked from the bottom up. It's got the ribbing detail there. Mine has a V-neck in the front and a boat neck in the back. It's got a little bit of detail here where you do the, the bind off um, and some ribbing along the armband. I love this pattern. I've knit, again, two of them. I would definitely knit another one. Um, it, it's a great staple. I've worn my first one almost at least once a week all summer long. Um, it's great. Uh, in the summer heat with the cotton and the linen. And this one, since I've made it, I've worn it several times. Um, this was on my needles for almost a year uh, just because I made a mistake in it uh, and had to pull back and then it got put aside. But it's finally finished. It just, uh, last time I was working on it, I had split for the sleeves. And so all I had to do was the front and the back and then pick up for the the ribbing on the arm. So not a lot that needed to be done. It only took me, you know, a few hours of work to get to get it finished up and it was so nice to have this off the needles. So this is my first finished object, Rift Tee by Jacqueline Seaslack. All right, my second finished object is this beauty right here. So if you have been a viewer for a while, you'll know that uh, for Christmas last year I was making both my parents sweaters um, and I didn't quite get them finished. So this sweater is for my mother. Um, this is the Long Line Cardigan by Hohi Locatelli. Um, it is in a uh, top-down uh, raglan, uh, no, not raglan, sorry, um, set and sleeve cardigan, open front cardigan, um, with the, a shawl collar that's worked at the same time as the body, so you don't have to go back and pick it up. So, um, it's very long, as are a lot of Hohe sweaters. Uh, it does not call for a gradient uh, or fade of yarn. I did that on my own with a kit I purchased. The yarn I used for this was uh, Sweet Georgia Yarns Tough Love Sock. And in I used six colorways. It was a set that I purchased off their website. I don't think they have the sets anymore, but I'm pretty sure they have all the colorways. So let me just go through them really quick. So the lightest color up here is Ice Flow. And then the second color is Snowfall. And then we've got uh, Silver right here. And then we have this color here is Slate. This color here is uh, Charcoal. And then the very bottom ribbing is um, Cauldron. So it goes from the light, light gray to the dark, dark gray, almost black. And I did that on the sleeves as well. Sleeves are very long probably too long. She'll probably have to roll the sleeves up a little bit. Um, I love the shawl collar. Let's see. I'll turn this guy around here if I can. This guy usually lives in my um, living room with whatever sweater on it. So I, I love the back. It's a little wrinkled because I've had it sitting ready to gift. So as soon as I get done filming and recording, this is going over to my parents' house so that they can, she, my mom can have it. So you can see the shawl collar here. 
it's a great sweater. I really like it. I would definitely make it for myself. Um, it is size inclusive. Um, I believe I knit the 44 inch bust for my mom. Um, you could definitely use a shawl pin to close it, but I think she'll probably wear it open. Um, I used whatever needles it called for in the pattern. I believe it was US fours for the body and maybe US two and a halfs for the uh, ribbing um, along the bottom and, and whatnot um, and the sleeves. The uh, shawl color is ribbed as well, but you just used the US fours for that. Um, I love the shawl color detail. Again, I would definitely make this for myself, maybe not in a gradient, but um, in a beautiful uh, semi-solid or tonal. It's fantastic. So I really love it. It took me a long time. This went on the needles in, in September of 2020, and I finished it in August of 2021. So again, it set uh, for a while. Some of that was just my brain having to configure how to um, do the math gradient on the sleeves, which if you, again, if you've been around a while, you know, I don't love math, um, but I did figure out the math and it worked out great. So, um, that was, that was good. So that is uh, finished object. Number two, uh, finished object. Number three is a small one. Um, it is just a small set of dishcloths. I've been trying to knit some of these, uh, every month. I, this is definitely, I haven't stuck with that. These were cast on in April. Um, and I just finished them last month. Um, but they are just a set of dishcloths. The pattern is Chinese Waves Dishcloth by Margaret Radcliffe. Um, from the, it's a free pattern on the website, Maggie's Rags. It's linked below where all of my show notes are. And uh, I love this pattern. I used Knit Picks again on this. I used their Dishy Multi and the colorway on this, I believe was Jelly Bean. So I've got two sets here. They've been washed and, well, not really blocked, but washed and are ready for gifting. They'll go in the gift basket for Christmas time. They're, these are great gifts to give with maybe a nice bar of handmade soap from a local soap maker as a holiday gift. So there we go. That is uh, finished object number three. Oh, I used uh, US 7s, uh, which I believe is what the pattern calls for for this. And it's a free pattern. Okay, I have one more um, FO to show you. I'm going to switch out this guy here and put the other one on, and I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. So this is finished object number four. This is another, uh, this was my father's Christmas sweater uh, that I was making for last Christmas. So this is the Gramps Cardigan by Tin Can Knits. Uh, very size inclusive pattern. Um, I knit my version out of Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Tweed in colorway Wellies Heather. I love this tweed. It's it's so tweedy, um, <laughs> which I, is what I want in a tweed yarn that has a lot of that the tweedy Donegal bits. Um, it is a non superwash yarn. Um, I knit the two X size on this one again, super size inclusive pattern. I think it goes from zero to six months to four XL adult. Um, it has. A shawl collar. Um, it has buttons on it. Uh, it has patch pockets, um, which you can't see. In the pattern, they did them in a, a, a contrasting color that you can kind of see it there. Uh, I don't think my dad would have liked a contrasting color, so I did the whole shawl or the whole pattern in one color. Um, in the pattern, again, I think they do the shawl collar in a contrasting color, and um, it also calls for elbow patches, which I didn't do. I could add those later, but I just for my dad, I didn't really think that was uh, the look he was going for. So this, uh, I cast this on last October and I cast it off just this past week. It is a beautiful sweater. Uh, I believe it's knit on size sevens. Um, I used whatever the, uh, the needle called for in the pattern is um, with a smaller size for the ribbing. Um, and the shawl color. I really enjoyed the shawl color. Uh, it did take me a little bit of time, shawl colors always do, but I think it turned out really nicely. I um, purchased these buttons from um, someplace on Etsy. I can't remember what it is, but uh, I've talked about it in a previous podcast. So you can go back and look uh, at the show notes for previous podcasts if you really wanna know. But this pattern called for seven buttons, or sorry, nine buttons for this size. Uh, I really liked how that turned out, and overall I think he'll be very pleased with it. 
So this again is the Gramps Cardigan by Tin Can Knits. And that is my fourth finished object and final finished object for this episode. And my third sweater finish in three weeks. <laughs> but again, um, on this one, I only had the shawl collar left to do um, and to sew on the buttons and the, po the pockets. So not a ton of work on this one. It took me a, most of a weekend to get this finished up. But once it was finished, it was blocking and sewing on the buttons and no problem at all. Okay, so that's it for finished objects. Quick and easy, huh? Okay, so I have only two works in progress right now. I'm dying to cast a whole bunch of things on, but I'm trying to get my needles as clear as possible before, um, before I do that. So I've got two shawls that have been on my needles for quite some time. Um, the first one is in one of my bearded pearl bags. This is an old bag I've had for a while from them. And I believe I was working on this on the last episode as well. So um, this is the Seeky Shawl by Dawn Henderson. It's a free pattern on her website. I am using um, this beautiful yarn. You can kind of see the sparkle. In the light, it sparkles amazingly. This is from Anzula Luxury Fibers. Uh, it is their Nebula base. And it is colorway Penny. So I am working through the first ball of it. Uh, so I have this much left of the first ball, and then I use about half of the second ball before I bind off and make tassels. So the last time I showed it on the uh, podcast, I was where this pink marker is here, and so I put this much on in the past three weeks, which is pretty good. This has been my lunch hour knitting. Um, this is a twisted rib shawl, so it's knit and pearl, um, or twisted knit and pearl um, every other row. So it does take some time. I can get about four rows done over my lunch hour, which is one repeat of the pattern. I think it's gonna be beautiful uh, when it's all finished and blocked out. I think that's, it's stunning. And you can't, you can't see it. You can see it in the yarn, but it does. It just shimmers in the light with that Stellina in there. The yarn is 86%. Um, 84% Superwash Merino, 16% Stellina. So it's got lots and lots of Stellina in it, more than most um, yarns. And I love it. So I'm just working away on this. This is the back. Um, I like that the yarn is very tonal, so you can kind of see the the different colors. Uh, I, not, I did not alternate skeins. I'm okay if you can kind of see a line where I switch into the new skein. That's not going to bother me at all. Uh, I kind of like that look, especially on this shawl. So this is being knit on uh, US fives I'm using Addies on this. I think that's it for that one. Seeky shawl. Okay. And for my second uh, whip, also in another Beard of Pearl bag. This is one of their Punky Men bags. Again, I've had this for a long time. This is my oldest whip on the needles. This was cast on in January of 2019. I had the yarn long before that. So this is my Lily Pilly Wrap by Ambo O'Brien, which I was looking for this uh, the link to this for the show notes today and I realized just this year Amba has released the Lily Pilly shawl which is a version of this but in a uh, asymmetrical triangle instead of the asymm asymmetrical rectangle which I'm sure there's a uh, uh, an actual name for but I can't think of it so this is the Lily Pilly wrap it's knit on the bias so the number of stitches doesn't change across the rows which is fantastic. The last time I showed this, which was sometime last year, uh, or much earlier this year, I was in the middle of this lace section. So I finished the first lace section. There are two, this one and then one at the end. And then I've done all of this where I've moved on to the next section of striping. I am knitting this in yarn that I purchased for this shawl. Um, I purchased it a very long time ago. It is actually the colors that the the sample was shown in, which is part of why I, I picked them. This is Mad Tosh. Let's see. This is Mad Tosh 
old, old label, as you can see, Tosh Merino Light. The pink colorway, the pink fuchsia colorway is um, Coquette. And then the striping colorways are Smokestack and Antler. And again, these are Tosh Merino Light, which is a single ply um, yarn. And I am knitting the, this on US Fives as well. And it's coming along. Now it's super simple. It's just mindless striping. Um, just have to pay attention to um, increase on the one side and decrease on the other side so you keep that, that shape going. The lace will be beautiful when it blocks out, as all of Amba's lace patterns are. And one day this will be off the needles, hopefully soon. I'm not sure. I feel the ish to cast on a whole bunch of projects, so no, don't know that I'll get it done before I cast on something else, but it's nice to get some work in on it so that it's not just sitting in a bag forever. Okay. Now we're going to move on to wit. Uh, sorry. Now we're going to move on to stash acquisition. We're moving right through this today. Um, I have a few things to share. Sorry, I didn't take them out of the plastic, which I should have. Um, first I'll share this. I don't have, if I can find uh, who was the seller of this, I will, um, put it in the show notes, but, uh, there's a local, there was a local Omaha fiber festival. I think it was the first one last weekend, um, here at an outdoor market. Um, and they had a couple of local farms from the Omaha metro area, um, and over in Iowa, which is not just across the river from, um, Omaha. Uh, so they had a couple and a, a couple of local farms and I don't, these didn't, this did not have a tag on it. Uh, I believe it's a worsted weight. I believe it's probably close to 200 yards per skein. Have no idea. It's an alpaca, hundred percent alpaca, but I loved the colorways of the two. So I have no idea what I'm going to make with it, but I couldn't pass it up. And I love to buy local farm yarn and it's very soft and squishy. Probably be some kind of cowl. I haven't decided yet. So that was one purchase. Um, the next purchase was from Freckled Whimsy. Um, and actually, I made two separate purchases over the past couple months, so I thought I'd share both of them with you. One of them just, just arrived. So I got several uh, skeins from Freckled Whimsy. They do um, self-striping sock yarn. So I got two skeins on her Dreamy Base, which is a 75 Superwash Merino, 15 Nylon, 10 Tensile. Um, and so this is 115 grams, 433 yards. And this is colorway Upsa Daisy. And I saw this on somebody else's Instagram feed or, or podcast, and I loved how it striped up, so I had to purchase a skein of it. So there's the freckled whimsy. So that was one of the first. I got another skein of that same base, and this is uh, self-striping colorway Tranquility. And then just a, a week or so ago, I grabbed a couple more skeins on a different base. So this is um, just their Serendipity base, which is their 7525 Merino Nylon. Um, so it's 460 yards total. So I've got an 80 gram self-striping and a 20 gram mini. So the um, the self-striping is called Fancy Like Applebee's and don't see a name for the mini on this one. So it's just a, a blue mini, so Fancy Like Applebee's. And then this one is Zen, it's a self-striping and it's the same base, same makeup, 80 gram and 20. So that is my haul from Freckled Whimsy. And then I'm not going to take this out of the packet. Well, maybe I will. Sorry for the crinkling. I'm sorry. I'll take one. So I got five skeins. You can see them here. Of yarn uh, to make a sweater. It's uh, from the Periwinkle Sheep. And she was having a sale on her uh, Merino Yak. So I got pick up five skeins in the colorway cherry on top and it's a 70 merino superwash merino 20 yak 10 nylon base 
435 yards per skein. So I've got five skeins. That should be enough to make me a fingering weight sweater. Um, or I could hold it with mohair and do um, a DK weight sweater. But I loved this red color. I think it's beautiful. And it was on sale. So I saw that. I follow her on Instagram and jumped at the chance to get a sweater's quantity of her yarn. And my final purchase came in this huge bag because Knit Picks put out their new Felici colors. And uh, I usually just buy one or two. I have a small stash of it, not a lot. I've worked through most of it. And when they put out the new ones this year, I realized that I had to have them all. So we'll go through these pretty quickly. But these are all of the brand new colors of Felici from Knit Picks. I purchased two of each color. So this first one is Desert Rose. And this was actually the first color I saw and the one that made me want to go grab the yarn. So Desert Rose. Their rainbow color for this time is Psychedelic Sunset. Each of these is a 50 gram ball. Um, the Felici base is, um, where is it? 75-25 Merino Nylon, but it's some of the softest that I've ever felt. Um, it's 50 grams, 218 yards per 50 gram ball. Okay. Um, this one is Speed Racer. I thought this would be fun for some of my nieces and nephews. This one is Game Over. This one is Summer Nights. This one is Under the Sea. This one is Red Rocks. I love that one. This one is Base Jump. And the last one is Mermaid Tails. Yeah, Mermaid Tails. So that is all of them. Um, I will say, uh, when I got my original package, I was missing one of the balls of yarn. And I reached out to Knit Picks. I called them, uh, I got the package on a Sunday. I called them on Monday. And by Wednesday, I had the missing package, or the missing ball of yarn. They were fantastic. Um, which I've never had to deal with any customer service issues with them before. So it was nice that there were no issues. Um, I bought, at first I was a little shocked at myself that I bought all of that yarn. I mean, who's surprised? Look at behind me. But I, I realized that over time, as much as I love all kinds of indie dyed, uh, self-striping yarns and they're beautiful and I love working with them. Truthfully, when I go to pick out socks for my everyday wear, uh, the socks I pick first are always my Knit Picks Felici socks, every time. I wear those first and then when they're all, they've all been worn and are in the wash pile, then I start using the others until they're washed again. So I don't think, while this was a big investment for me, uh, I don't think it was a bad investment or even um, as impulsive as I originally thought it was. So that's just my little thing. I, I don't, worry about being judged about how much yarn I buy uh, as long as I can afford it and can pay my bills I buy whatever I want uh, but I just thought I'd put that out there I know some people like to judge on how much yarn people do and do not have so uh, okay uh, that's it this is going to be a short and sweet episode I wanted to get through everything as quickly as possible and get something out there for all of you I hope everyone has had a great few weeks and that you're all doing well and uh, staying cool in the summer uh, heat if you are here in North America um, and if you are, uh, that you're crafting, uh, Mojo is going strong. Mine is still currently going strong and I hope it stays that way. So hopefully I will record another episode soon, but until then, bye.